Good morning. Good morning. All are welcome today in the name of God, the Father who invites us to his heavenly feast. A special welcome to visitors worshiping with us today. We are glad we can be together on this beautiful day that the Lord has given us. If you have any prayer concerns, complete one of the brown prayer concern cards in the back of each pew. Or if you're watching from home, email us at prayer at holyspiritlc.net so we can add them to the prayer list. I do have one um, important prayer concern to share with you all today. Uh, earlier this morning, I received word from uh, Barb and Ted Schultz that their son Kevin died suddenly last evening. Uh, Kevin and his wife Marcy um, are part of the staff here at Holy Spirit. Uh, they help clean the building and keep us safe, especially in this time. So our hearts go out and our prayers go out to um, the Schultz family on this sudden loss of Kevin. Keep Marcy and Barb and Ted and Jeff and Jenny and their families in your prayers in the days ahead. We'll share more information about service arrangements when those become available. As we gather for worship today, if you haven't already done so, please take uh, white grape juice and gluten-free wafers if you them and also remember to uh, dispose of your cups and plates as you leave worship today uh, today is also the last day to bring in soap for lutheran world relief uh, we are collecting we we i should say we have collected over 115 school kits made 60 quilts and are at 350 bars of soap, which is basically what we did last year. So thank you for your generosity. That continues to go out to families in need around the world. So thank you. Next Saturday is our last food distribution of the 2020 season. Uh, we hope that volunteers will be able to join us at eight. We are partnering this time as well with an organization called Polar Drop. So there will be some clothing that we'll be handing out as well as hopefully pre-boxed food items so that we don't have to do as much bagging. In addition to that, uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan will be outside in a, a tent providing free flu shots for those who would like them. Uh, you can come and get a flu shot and help out with the food or receive food. Um, if you are just getting a flu shot, though, we ask you to park in the Sikh Temple lot to the south of the building just for ease of traffic flow with the cars. Um, confirmation continues this evening at 6 p.m. with Zoom's class. Uh, it's the same link as last week, and it's also in the announcements. So if you need that, you can uh, check that uh, email from this past Friday or even last Monday's announcement email. Confirmands, same time, same place, 6 p.m. from wherever you're Zooming from. Our Psalms class continues on Wednesday at either 11 here in person, socially distant, or 7 p.m. via Zoom. Again, that link is in the announcements, and it's the same as last week's. Uh, this week, we will be studying Psalm 55 and looking at it in light of the emotion of fear that is expressed in that emotion, or in that psalm. I hope that you will join us for that class. Last but not least, youth, you will have a Bible study, I believe, that will be posted on YouTube 6.30 on Tuesday evening. I hope that you will be able to take advantage of that. We, um, we do have one thing to celebrate, though, today, um, and that is that it is Frank's birthday. So... <laughs> Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Frank, happy birthday to you. Uh, 
Leave it up to Frank to magically pick out the key that that was in as well. <laughs> it was G, in case you're wondering. <laughs> Thank you, Rick, for being in on that surprise. But now let's stand as we begin with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Faithful God, have, have mercy, mercy on us. We, we confess, confess that, that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble. Cast, cast away our, our transgressions, transgressions and, and turn, turn us, us again to life in you. you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and, and Lord. Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, Live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord of the feast, you have prepared a table before all peoples and poured out your life with abundance. Call us again to your banquet. Strengthen us by what is honorable, just, and pure, and transform us into a people of righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen.
our seats. And at this time, if there's any children who'd like to join me up front, you're welcome to come. And those who are joining us at home, pay attention to your screens at home. So I'm wondering if anyone likes emojis and likes using emojis. There's one that I like that I use a lot, and it looks like this. (laughs) I have a few in front of me, and I'm wondering if you know these. And those who are in our congregation, I need your help today. So what do you think that one looks like? Happy! There's a happy. You got exciting. I heard that. Kind of silly. Yeah. Silly. All right, got another one. Ready? What do we got? Angry. Yeah, it looks angry on that emoji. All right. We're doing a great job. All right, let's see if you know this emoji. Do you know this one? Thumb. I approve, thumbs up, happy. All right, here's the last one. What do you think that looks like? Sad, Sad, maybe scared. Well, this is the one that I found when I was looking for the word worried. He looks a little bit worried, like he thinks that something bad might happen. You know, that's what worried means. It means when we might think something bad might happen, or we might be scared about what might happen. Well, in the scripture today, it tells us that there's actually something we can do when we're feeling worried. We can pray to Jesus and let the calming effect of prayer and let Jesus just give everything to Jesus and let Jesus take care of us. And so we're going to pray about that. We're going to ask Jesus to help us remember that when we're feeling this way, when we're feeling worried, that we can stop and pray. Let's pray about that. Let's fold our hands, close our eyes, and let's pray. Jesus, there are times when we feel excited, times we feel angry, Times we feel happy, times that we are mad, times we are sad, and times we are silly. When we are feeling worried, help us remember that you are there for us. Instead of feeling scared about what might happen or what if something bad happens, help us to remember to stop and talk to you about it and pray to you and to let your peace come over us and help us feel good. In your name, O Holy Jesus, we pray. Amen. Our first reading is from Isaiah 25, verses 1 to 9. Listen for God's word for us. O Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you. I will praise your name. For you have done wonderful things, plans formed of old, faithful and sure. For you have made the city a heap, the fortified city a ruin. The palace of aliens is a city no more. It will never be rebuilt. Therefore, strong peoples will glorify you. Cities of ruthless nations will fear you. For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and a shade from the heat. 
When the blast of the ruthless was like a winter rainstorm, the noise of aliens like heat in a dry place, you subdued the heat with shades of clouds. The song of the ruthless was stilled. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines of rich food filled with marrow, a well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his peoples he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. The second reading is from Philippians 4, 1 to 9. My brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I I urge Euodia and I urge Syntyche to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, and I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, Whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away. One to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. 
But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there was not wearing a wedding robe. He said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to his attendants, bind him hand and foot and throw him into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Whenever I hear today's gospel, I think back to Laura and my wedding reception in Troy at a reception hall called Petrozello's. Now, Petrozello's could actually host three separate parties at the same time. We happen to be on kind of a U-shaped mezzanine balcony, and the other two parties would be in uh, the rooms on the main floor off to the side. Now, our balcony view made for some wonderful photos and regal views as you looked down a long winding staircase towards a big fountain in the middle of the entryway. But it also meant that everyone who walked in those front doors could see what was happening on the balcony up above. It means they could also see my first and only ever attempt at the electric slide. (laughs) And in case you're wondering, yes, all of that footage has been safely locked away, (laughs) never to be shared again. Anyways, it was clear that we were having a lot of fun at our reception. So much fun, in fact, that we received three wedding crashers from one of the other parties down below. They only stayed for a few minutes, but they took time to seek Laura and myself out in order to tell us how much fun our reception was in comparison to the one that they were supposed to be at. I suppose we should have been offended that they were crashing our party. But it was actually quite the opposite. Even though I had no clue where, who they were or where they came from, I was glad that they came and celebrated with us. Glad that they could just show up, feel welcome, and enjoy a good time. And hearing them tell us that, well, that was an unexpected wedding gift that still sticks with me today. For the past few weeks, Jesus' parables have had a common theme, the graciousness of God's invitation. First, Jesus says that tax collectors and prostitutes get into the kingdom before the chief priests and the elders because they believed John the Baptist and repented. Last week, we heard how others were given the vineyard because the tenants killed the owner's son. And today, people in the streets are invited to the feast because those who were invited first ignored the invitation. The point seems clear. Show up and celebrate God's gracious invitation, and our host will be happy. It doesn't matter if you had one of those first invitations or simply crashed the party. God's already prepared the feast, so just show up and enjoy it, and God will be happy. I guess the question is, why didn't those first people invited show up? I think it comes down to a question of authority, one that might shock our American sense of individual freedom and choice. Because saying no to this wedding feast wasn't supposed to be an option. Saying no to the wedding of the king's son not only dishonors the king, but also shows contempt for the successor to the throne. So refusing this invitation is basically an act of rebellion. Still, the king keeps on reaching out. And when he is again rejected and those who reject his authority receive the consequences of their actions, the king sends out even more slaves into the streets to invite everyone they could find. 
and they do as they're told. Inviting both the good and the bad, Matthew says. Actually, the original Greek reverses the order. It says both the bad and the good, as if to make clear that the king wanted absolutely everyone to come. Now, putting those two ideas together, Jesus seems to be suggesting that being good or bad has nothing to do with being judged worthy or unworthy. This king is not like Santa Claus, making a list and checking it twice just to find out who's naughty or nice. The doors of the banquet hall were opened to everyone, good and bad. But the first guest's lack of respect for this gracious invitation of the king is what makes them unworthy. They reject his generosity and his authority. And such behavior is unworthy of grace from the king. This also helps us understand the troubling part later on in this parable. When the king comes and sees a man without a wedding garment and then throws him out. You see, in Jesus' day, wedding, being invited to a wedding feast, you were not expected to provide your own wedding garments. They would be provided for the, for the guests by the host. And so just as this feast is an unearned gift for all of those who come, so was the necessary clothing for the party. Whether you were rich or poor, good or bad, all you had to do was put on the appropriate attire which you were given. So if you come to the party and aren't wearing the robe, it means you took it off. Like those who were invited and refused to come, this man has rejected the grace the king has offered. This man acknowledged the goodness of the king by showing up for the party, but then he failed to acknowledge the king's authority over him by not wearing this garment. He wanted to come to the party, but not be changed by the celebration. He just wanted to take what he wanted and leave. That means there's more to God's party than just showing up for it. It seems that it's not just about the invitation. It's also about our response to that invitation. It's about our full participation in God's party. And the church, the parallel to putting on a wedding garment is the act of baptism. In fact, in the early church, the newly baptized would be given white robes. They would be placed upon them as they come out of the water to symbolize this transformation. The robes became an outward sign of an inward grace, of being clothed in Christ and having your sin washed away. And once the baptized had been properly clothed, they were now ready to share in Christ's eternal feast. So it was for baby Isla earlier today as she was baptized. So it is for all of us at our own baptisms. Like the guests, both good and bad in the story, we don't have to provide the robe. We don't have to earn our way into heaven. The robe is given, the grace is given by our gracious God in the waters of baptism. But it does make me wonder, are there ever times in our lives when we are like this man who came to the king's banquet only to take off the wedding robe. I suspect we all do this at times. So what's our excuse? What's our excuse for not participating fully in the party? What's our excuse for not inviting others to join us in this feast we share? Is it because we don't want to give up control of our lives or our opinions or our preconceptions? Is it because we don't want to go to the party if those people are going to be there too? If so, look at what Paul says in the second lesson today. In the midst of conflict in their church community, Paul urges Yodia and Syntyche and the whole church in Philippi to rejoice in the Lord always, he says, to let your gentleness be known by everyone, 
to not worry about anything but in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, he says, let your requests be made known to God. And in response, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. I think Paul is saying that instead of focusing on what divides us, we should all celebrate what Christ has done for us and the peace that he gives us. That is just one way to more fully participate in God's party. It's how the gospel changes us from people who are convinced that we have the power and the authority to do whatever we want into people who accept God's grace and then do what is just and pure and pleasing in God's sight, as Paul says, all in response to that grace. Indeed, there is something about seeing how blessed we are to be guests at God's party that brings joy to our lives, no matter what worldly worries or situations we find ourselves in. You know, when those guys showed up at our wedding, they were dressed for the occasion. They joined us on the dance floor. They talked to the other guests. They even invited us downstairs to see how much better we had it. <laughs> they participated in the party, and they shared in our joy. And that was enough for me to see how truly blessed I was. God wants us to fully participate in his son's party, not for God's benefit, but for our own. We're invited to come as we are, but God loves us too much to leave us as we are. And so he provides the garments for us to wear. So go ahead, take the garment God provides, crash the party, and enjoy the feast. Amen. Stand as you are able and join me in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Gracious host, 
Fill your church with a spirit of joyous hospitality. We pray for bishops, teachers, church leaders, and all children of God, including Brandon, Allison, Aza, Jonathan, Audrey, and Ruby Trammell. Brandon, Penny, Gabriel, and Caitlin Tripp. Jerry and Mary Tucker, and Chris, Rhonda, Courtney, and Ryan Utter. As we invite others to your table of boundless grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, as creation waits with eager longing for redemption, renew us with your life-giving waters. We give thanks for the waters of baptism that washed over Isla Morgan today. And pray for her as she grows in faith in the years to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayer. Gracious host, as you set a table in the presence of enemies, so bless the efforts of diplomats, international peace workers, and world leaders who navigate conflict. May they proceed with dialogue and understanding so that justice and peace prevails. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our our prayer. prayer. Gracious host, let your gentleness be known among those who are weary or ill, including those we name before you now. Strengthen doctors, medical care workers, and caretakers who see to their needs. Lord, in your mercy, hear Hear our prayers. prayers. Gracious hosts, when we are quick to judge outward appearance, remind us how you clothe all in your mercy. We pray for ministries that provide needed clothing and other personal care assistance in this community, including those ministries led by members of Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious host, as we remember those who have died and are gathered at the heavenly banquet, comfort us with your presence. Assure us of your peace at all times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker Maker of of all things. things. You You have have set set before before us these gifts of your your good creation. creation. Prepare us for your heavenly banquet. Nourish us with this rich food and drink, and send us forth to set tables in the midst of a suffering world. Through the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, our bread of life, our table, and our food, 
You created a world in which all might be satisfied by your abundance. You dined with Abraham and Sarah, promising them life, and fed your people Israel with manna from heaven. You sent your son to eat with sinners and to become food for the world. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, We await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make of us the body of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Now let us pray together the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet where Christ gives himself as food and drink. This is the body of Christ given for you. Amen. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Amen. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place nourished and forgiven into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example the same Jesus Christ, and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. 
forth by God's blessing, our true faith confessing, the people of God from this dwelling take leave. The supper is ended, oh now be extended, the fruits of this service in all who believe. The seeds of Christ's teaching, receptive souls reaching, shall blossom in action for God and for all. Your grace shall incite us, your love shall unite us to work for your kingdom and answer your call. With praise and thanksgiving to God ever living, the task of our every day life we will face, our faith ever sharing, in love ever caring, embracing God's children, the whole human race. With your feast you feed us, with your light now lead us, unite us as one in this, thy pledge we share. Then may all the living, with praise and thanksgiving, give honor to Christ and his name that we bear. Go in peace. Remember the poor. Thanks. Thanks be to God.